Last week, President Zelensky traveled to all three Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, in a gratitude visit. It is his first official trip abroad this year. Many more to come. Good afternoon. Guess who? Henry Keane is here. It's Sunday, so sit back, relax and leave it to me and my colleagues at UATV English to break the hardest of truth in easiest of terms for you directly from Ukraine, just as usual. Zelensky's surprise visit to meet with Lithuania came first, then came also as a sort of a surprise, a visit to meet Estonia. Then Zelensky was no surprise this time, greeted at the Riga Airport Latvia by Latvian Foreign Minister and later on he meet with Latvian President, Prime Minister and Parliament Speaker at the Riga Castle. The leader of Lithuania, where President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine began a tour of Baltic states on Wednesday, recently made a pointed plea to help Kiev hold the line against invading Russian forces as support for Ukraine in the war elsewhere in Europe threatens to fragment. For all those saying they are tired of war in Ukraine, a reminder by the terrorist Russia that there is no limit to its brutality and thirst for blood, President Gitanas Nausela of Lithuania wrote on his social media platform X on December 29th, hours after a Russian barrage of missiles and drones slammed into cities across Ukraine. In Estonia, a four-story banner that combines the flags of Ukraine and Estonia hangs over a main square in the capital Tallinn. In Latvia, Foreign Minister Christian Iskarins is calling for allies to ramp up military support to Ukraine without delay. Almost nowhere is the emotional investment for Ukraine's war effort stronger than in the Baltics, where the three former Soviet states declared independence at the end of the Cold War to escape Russia's grip. In Baltics and in my native Latvia, remember that very well. Let me put this visit in easy terms for you. The message is not only to express obvious gratitude, but to state again. Once again, Putin is not going to stop. Zelensky reminded that the insecurity of partners regarding financial and military aid to Ukraine only increases Russia's courage and strength sometimes. However, Ukraine has shown the world that Russia's military can be stopped. The world is a big machinery indeed, and it is hard to run it, and even harder to make it run in a proper way. But as far as I know, our president, he won't stop. That was a busy week for President Zelensky. He was meeting the world politicians and managers non-stop this week. Zelensky met the Minister of Foreign Affairs of France, Stephanie Sejourné. Parties discussed our defence needs, a major importance of that joint production of drones, artillery, further strengthening of air defence. Zelensky also met with Penny Pritzker, the US Special Representative for the Economic Recovery of Ukraine. I can't imagine a more vivid and powerful sign of strong American support for our country. To quote the President of Ukraine, last year was a record-breaking year for the development of Ukrainian-American relations. We are determined to continue to support this dynamic. It significantly helps Ukraine to fight against the aggressor. And of course, the UK visited UA. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak met Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev. With £2.5 billion package that will provide Ukraine with long-range missiles, air defence, artillery, ammunition and maritime security. Russian seat warmer Medvedev threw a tantrum calling Britain eternal enemy and threatening Great Britain with, I don't know, Medvedev going to London maybe and becoming Prime Minister instead of Sunak because I can't imagine a curse worse than that. Anyway, all these high visits obviously show the world understands Ukraine and sees its violent fight and appreciates it. Let us go on bird's view high on this one, shall we? Is Russia collapsing? Well, yes and no. Yes, because to have a petty KGB clerk usurping a power in the country and then amending its constitution to its own taste as if it is a restaurant's menu is nothing but a collapse already. And no, because Russian GDP is, hello sanctions, feels just fine. Let us look back over the shoulder. Let us look back over the shoulder. Thanks to the imminent market reforms by President Boris Yeltsin and then acting Prime Minister Yegor Gaidar in the 1990s, Putin arrived at an already late table and Russia enjoyed an average economic growth of 7% a year from 1999 to 2008. The Russian economy was hit hard by the global financial crisis in 2008 and 
never actually fully recovered. It has barely grown since 2009 and not at all since 2014 when the West introduced its financial sanctions. The aggravated Western sanctions since 2022 have shaken the stability of the Russian economy, but so far they have not caused any significant reduction in GDP. My question is, why? Strangely, Putin does not care about economic growth. And why should he? The West is too slow, and that adds self-confidence and arrogance to Russian Tsar. It sends him a clear message. West is fat and lazy. It looks like does not care about anything but late-night shows, fuel prices and its own comfort. And it is not ready to fight for its comfort, if and Indeed, we have a precedent here. Wars over dictatorial regimes have already been lost twice by Europe, in the First and then in the Second World Wars. Yes, you heard me right. Europe lost twice in these terrible massacres because it could and should have prevented both if only acted decisively, but it did not. As a result, tens of millions of lives lost. Today, new, supposedly united Europe, will it choose to follow its own footsteps for a third time? Will there be war in my native Riga? Then Lithuania, Estonia, Moldova maybe, maybe Russia march deeper into Europe where Viktor Orban will open the gates of Russia to Russian troops as the head of the European Union. I mean, look at us. Orban as a head of Europe. Russia as a president of the United Nations Security Council. I'm sorry, but where does our tolerance end in a suicidal hypocrisy begins? The one that does not allow some politicians in Europe to see that it is not Putin's fault that he is Putin. Putin is a dictator and dreams of dictatorship. Putin is not to blame for the bare fact that he seized upon absolute power and is corrupted by it. Lord Acton was right, after all, power tends to corrupt, absolute power corrupts absolutely, he said. Those may smarter, way smarter and stronger than this delusional Soviet runt when corrupted by a way less amount of power. So what happens to all of us if Ukraine, with the help of the parts of the world that likes to think of itself as civilized, does not break the nose of a presumptuous Russian thug, will be the fault of this very civilized world, not Putin, isn't it not? Because when it comes to survival, weakness and liberal naivety are crimes. Those leftist slogans can be fun when Greta Thunberg speaks them out with the serious face of hers. But for high-ranked politicians responsible for the very future existence of Europe, such a naive luxury is simply not affordable. You cannot negotiate with disease. You cannot talk sense to a virus or appease a plague. And that is what Putin's regime clearly is, and it is spreading. Belarus, North Korea, Iran, you name it. So it is not only Ukraine waiting for F-16s and German terrorists for more than a year by now, having our best men and women dying in trenches, while the civilized West is hesitating in an attempt to deny the objective reality. Ukraine is fighting all Western war for it. And Ukraine needs world's backup and help right now, until it is not too late. Let me quote The Economist on the theme. The West could do a lot more to frustrate Mr. Putin. If it chose, it could deploy industrial and financial resources that dwarf Russia's. However, fatalism, complacency and a shocking lack of strategic vision are getting in the way, especially in Europe. For its own sake, as well as Ukraine's, the West urgently needs to shake off its lethargy. Amen to that. Thank you, my beloved audience. It was Henry Keane in UATV English Studio breaking the hard truth to easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. If you like what we do for you, show it. Like us, subscribe and share. Help us to promote Ukrainian voice worldwide and also do not forget to express your own opinion in the comments below. It matters a lot. Stay safe and tune for more next week with my colleague Paul Stelmach in this very studio for you already tomorrow. See you in a week. Bye.